You guys, you thought you thought you were gonna get both Wolf Brothers this week. Well, let me tell you a little something. Let me tell you something about that. Will just got a flat on his way here. <laughs> so you only getting me. You just get this guy. Woo boy. How how you guys doing? Hello, Thom, Mikachu, Slippy. Slippy, you're my guy. Don't leave. DJ, Cart, Kevin. Caloric. Hello. Last week we had some peaking issues. I started this off really loud so you could tell me if there's still any peaking issues. Caloric. Who else see it? Fred, Atten, the Huge. Good Lama, God Lama. Hello. You might notice a little something different in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It says hop over to the post show. Twitch.tv slash Bob Wolf. Every single week we do this. Afterwards, I go live on Twitch where I draw the thumbnail. All those little pretty thumbnails you see for all these Wolf Den lives, I doodle them after uh, after we do these. I usually do them around 11 o'clock. Tonight, I'm going to try to do it immediately after Wolf Den Live. I have a little system in place. And I put that there today because I'm a Twitch affiliate. And this today, Twitch rolled out emotes for Twitch affiliates. Uh, I'm sorry, not emotes. Subscriptions for Twitch affiliates. So if you subscribe to me on Twitch, you will potentially get that little that little uh, Sonic down there. Hello, everybody. I have a question. Can I be mod? DJ Creeper says no, because you asked. <laughs> you don't ask for that. You can't ask for mod. Nobody has ever gotten mod for, by asking. Hello, Vile Tough. Dang Will. Dang Will is right. Well, Will Knees is such a... Uh, yeah, he's got he had a, he's had a bad month. It's been a bad month this month. He went to, uh, I think, a wedding-like uh, thing. You know, when they like... Uh, the rehearsal dinner. He went to a rehearsal dinner. And thought he could make it. Oh, no, no. It's not how things go. Guys! Oh, don't forget. If you are going to sub on Twitch, because you, cause you love me so much... Uh, you could just use your little Amazon Prime and, and you get a free sub. So it's free. It's totally free to get that emote if they approve it. I just sent for it like a few hours ago, like two hours ago. Anyway, let's get into it. There's a lot of things to, to talk about today. First, let's do the... Let's talk about PlayStation Plus. And Xbox Live games with gold for the free games for July. Let's get in here. Uh, oh, you don't want to see that. That's my. Those are my notes. PlayStation Plus. Do we usually start with PlayStation Plus? I don't care because I'm starting with it. Until Dawn is a big deal. That was a full sixty dollar game. What was it like a year ago when it came out? Everybody was clamoring for it. It was all over Twitch. All the little. Streamers are streaming it and scaring the poop out of themselves. You got Until Dawn for PS4. Again, big deal. Game of Thrones PS4, that's a big deal. The new season's coming out soon. I'm not a Game of Thrones person. That that would be the Game of Thrones Telltale game. That is a big deal, and it's free. Tokyo Jungle for PS3. Tokyo Jungle is that weird Japanese uh, like animal fighting game. And that is free on PlayStation 3. Let me look that up for you. Oh, I hit a button. Why? Oh, I keep hitting command. Because this is a Mac and I'm emulating uh, a Windows. This is Tokyo Jungle. It's a <laughs> It's an animal fighting game. And, uh, oh, the concept art's much better than the actual game. And you could be a little Pomeranian, too, if you want. There you go. If you're into that. So, Tokyo Jungle. Darkstalkers Resurrection for PlayStation 3. That is uh, an SNK-style like fighting game. Like an anime fighting game. Elemental 4... 1? Elemental 4i for PS Vita. Which looks like a kind of like limbo type game. And Don't Die, Mr. Robot for PS Vita, which looks like a not good game. And Xbox Live! 
You have yourselves. Grow up. Some indie game, which was a big deal when that came out about a year ago. That was a big deal because I think it was one of the... F oh, it, it was a PlayStation 4 free game that you... It was the, one of the first ones you were able to vote on, and it won the most votes. So it was a free PlayStation 4 game for a, for one month, and now it is a free PlayStation, uh, Xbox One game. I can't talk anymore. Just I'm just going to... I'm just gonna just end my life. Runbo is another indie game that everybody liked on the Wii U. I think it had nine player co op. It was like one of the first games to have that many players. Kane and Lynch 2 for Xbox 360, which I heard was not that good. Uh, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Gotta say, PlayStation wins this month. Until Dawn. Game of Thrones. Tokyo Jungle. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Switch third parties, Aaron says. Why? Something you want to say about Switch third parties? The, the Master says, Wolf noticed me. Okay. I just did. Am I, am I out of coffee? Yep, out of coffee. Oh. Oh, you guys don't seem to care about the free games. Mm. Nope, you guys don't care. All right, moving on. What else did I even have here to talk about? I mean, we have to talk about the NES Classic. Or the Super NES Classic, I'm sorry. So, they did it. They announced Super NES Classic. Uh, so we all knew this was going to happen. Some of us were a little weary if it was going to come out this year or if it was going to come out next year. I forgot why. I think we, we thought they were out of resources. The same company that was developing the virtual console for the NES Classic is developing the virtual... I'm sorry, not the virtual console. The people who are developing the software for the NES Classic are developing the software for uh, virtual console on the Switch. So we thought they might be too busy working on that to make a Super NES Classic. Turns out they're making a Super NES Classic. I don't know what this means for the Switch Virtual Console, though. Are they going to delay that? Because a lot of the other online services are coming out early next year, 2018. So it's possible that they might delay Virtual Console because of this on the Switch. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping they'll be able to do both. So again, the Super NES Classic. Uh, I mean, if you can get your freaking hands on it. Let's look up the lineup. It's got a pretty damn solid lineup. Of course, the biggest <clears throat> the biggest of all of them, Star Fox 2. That game has been, <laughs> has been in development for 22 years. It's going to be $80 this time instead of 60 like the nes classic was because it comes with an extra controller i think this is why they did that they did that so that uh they could because they wanted to raise the price because there's a lot of demand and people are going to pay for it anyway and the way they they justified that was by tossing in another controller i think that's totally fine people are going to pay it anyway it's not that much more and we got to weed out some people the people who don't want to pay that much good don't buy it because i want to buy it i want to buy two in fact, if I let if I'm at the store and there are two sitting on the shelves, I'm buying both. So here it is, uh, nice and tiny, just like the other one, just like we thought. It's gonna have Super Mario World, which is what I think is the best Mario game. Not my favorite, but the best. Super Mario Kart. Uh, a Link to the Past, which is was my previous favorite Zelda game before Breath of the Wild. Note, though, that I am not that big of a Zelda fan. F-Zero, which I never, you know, I never got the appeal. I don't know why everybody's always creaming themselves over F-Zero. Super Metroid, some people's favorite Metroid game. Street Fighter 2. Everybody loves Street Fighter 2. Super Punch-Out, which I don't know if people like that that much. Castlevania? Wait, which Castlevania is this? Castlevania 4. Donkey Kong Country. A lot of people love Donkey Kong Country. Mega Man X. It's probably my favorite out of all of these games. Uh, Kirby Superstar. Kirby Superstar.
Kirby Superstar. Final Fantasy 3. Kirby's Dream Course, which is an amazing game. It's an amazing competitive multiplayer game. If you're going to play any of these with a friend, I mean, there's Mario Kart, but Kirby's Dream Course is amazing. Star Fox, Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island is really good. Super Mario RPG. A lot of people loved Super Mario RPG. There's a big cult following to that. Uh, it's an RPG, so I never played it. Contra 3, which is probably hard as hell. Secret of Mana. Earthbound, which is a big deal. And what's this last one? Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And, of course, the big one, Star Fox 2. So, Star Fox 2 was supposed to come out in 1995. But because that was right around the time of the N64 and the PlayStation 1, um, they decided not to release it because people were going to compare the graphics of the PlayStation 1 to this last generation game. Because the 3D just wasn't up to par. So they just flat out canceled it, even though it was completely finished. You can play it in emulators. It leaked. So you could just download an emulator of it. But it, I think that was like that one. That version is like 95% done or something. There's like some weird glitches. But this is going to be a 100% finished copy. The first time it has ever been commercially released. So this is a really big deal. In fact, it's such a big deal that the developers who worked on it got together after 22 years and had a little party with themselves. <laughs> they had a little mini pit, uh, launch party. Once my internet stops being a, a big fat loser. Oh, that's my tweet. Get out of my tweet. There they are. The guy on the left looks way too young to have been a developer on Star Fox 2. But these other guys, they worked on Star Fox 2. And now they and they didn't know that it was coming out. They had no idea because it was freaking Nintendo. They had the license to it. Another weird thing is that how how where did they have the file for Star Fox 2 laying around? Nintendo doesn't even have a copy of the original Mario like laying around somewhere. They they don't they don't have the 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 original files for it. All the ones that you see on Virtual Console are rips from ROMs that they just downloaded off the internet, put in a little container, and put on Virtual Console. So it's possible that this version of Star Fox 2 is one of those rips from a ROM somewhere. But they had they, they had to have screwed with it a little bit more because it wasn't 100% done. Also, there's this nice little Kotaku article. Well, that's a Gillette ad is what that is. Come on now. Star Fox 2 programmer is thrilled that it is coming out. Who is this? Blah, 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 blah. Dylan Cuthbert. That's the guy I just saw. He told Kotaku via email that he found out with everyone else when the news broke. So this was like two days ago. It made my day. Cuthbert said, he certainly seems pleased Star Fox 2 is finally getting an, uh, an official release, adding, it's bloody awesome. During the 1990s, Q Games founder Dylan Cuthbert cut his teeth in Nintendo program the first Star Fox, which came out, and the sequel, which did not. A playable version of Star Fox 2 was shown at 1995 at the Winter CES, but the finished game vanished into the ether. So, CES used to be where they showed games. That's the consumer consumer electronic uh, show. Consumer electronic show. Uh, they spun off video games spun off on their own to make E3. So this was E3 before E3. According to Cuthbert's, uh, Star Fox Two was canned because the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn had upped the bar for 3D graphics. Oh, I, I I misspoke before and I said it was the N64. But they were paving the way for the N64. Our older retro form of 3D just didn't cut it anymore. And Nintendo didn't want to raise comparisons, said Cuthbert. I agree that strategically, if not emotionally, it was the correct decision. But now our older retro form of 3D is the new cool kid on the block. It's perfect timing. It really is. It was, pretty, it was a pretty cool engine and had a lot of features. 
I'd expand the script, the scripting engine we had to allow more complex expressions. I did this for the next engine I wrote for Blasto. What the hell was that? On the PlayStation and expanded the scripting engine heavily in that direction with some great results. Working with Nintendo heavily influenced the level of detail at which we iterate on ideas. We don't have the luxury of Mario Club, as it used to be called, the QA and feedback department at Nintendo. So we try to emulate that as best we can. Working at Nintendo gave me that goal in the first place because I saw the process close up. But is it weird seeing a game you programmed in the mid-1990s come out this year? Totally weird. Totally weirded out and totally psyched, said Cuthbert. I mean, I had completely given up on the chance that it might come out. I spent two years of hard work making it and loved every minute. Finally, people get to see at finally get, people get to see all the little cool tweaks and things, all the touches and special ideas we threw in there. This game had so much ex, experimentation at the start, and that really shows in some of the encounters you'll come across. I hope people don't think they cleared the game with just one playthrough. In that sense, it is a very unique game. Apparently, the game changes each time you play. And it's not a smooth 60 frames per second. Interesting. Because a lot of old games that you play on, like, the Genesis or, you know, these old systems, they're, like, an insane frame rate. I think, I know this doesn't compare, but, like, Duke Nukem is, like, 120 frames a second or something ridiculous. Oh wait, why did I why did I leave that? Got a lot of technical difficulties going on. So of all of those games coming out for the NES Classic, SNES Classic, the most exciting of all of them is Star Fox 2. It's cool enough that we're getting the original Star Fox, which is a great game. I have played Star Fox 2 in an emulator before, and it is awesome. I was like shocked that it never came out because it was it is done. It is like almost completely done. What do you guys think about all that? Now I gotta read the chat all by myself. Again, Will uh, was on his way here and then he got a flat. <laughs> he went to some dinner thing and and just he just didn't make it. He's dead now. Rip. Uh, oh look, it's Frosty Nacho, my first sub on uh, on Twitch. AJ says I think Virtual Console for Switch is going to have a focus on newer consoles. They have the Switch Online for the older games. What? what is this? Is Switch Online something that I don't know about? Something different than Virtual Console? But anyway, I know that we're at least getting some GameCube stuff. So I guess what you're trying to say is that uh, we'll mostly see GameCube stuff on switch virtual console which i wouldn't be opposed to but i would still really like some snes stuff yeah i hope that the nes classic the snes classic i keep saying it wrong i hope that that doesn't hinder us getting snes games on the switch because we already have it took a long time to get super nintendo games on the 3ds and i'll buy Mega Man x for the for the fourth time i don't care Thom says, I never had SNES as a kid. I was always a Sega kid. So I want to grab this. I'm the same way. I was a Sega Genesis kid. Well, I had an NES. Then I had a Sega Genesis for Sonic and all that stuff. I always wanted a Super Nintendo, but I wasn't old enough to buy my own console. My parents were like, only one console. You don't need two consoles. So once emulators were available on, uh, on the internet... I downloaded an emulator and I played Super Mario World and Mega Man X. I think Mega Man X was I played before Super Mario World because I I missed out on those. And Mega Man X is amazing. Then years later, I think Will bought me a Super Nintendo for my birthday. Before he bought me a Super Nintendo, I got a copy of Okay, so I worked at GameStop and this guy came in and told, and he asked for if we had uh, Super Mario World. And I was like, no, we don't sell those old games anymore. He's like, oh, I have a Super Nintendo, but I, I'm just looking for that game. It's hard to find. I'm like, oh, you just get it on Amazon. Just freaking buy it on Amazon. 
And he's like, if you want, I, I think I told him that I, I really wanted a Super Nintendo. And he's like, if you want, I'll give you a Super Nintendo if you can find me that game. And I was like, okay, fine. And I just bought Super Mario World off Amazon. And then he came in with the Super Nintendo. We were going to do a trade. And the Super Nintendo was like, it had like a hole in it. It was like destroyed. And it didn't come with an AV cable. And I was like, well, first of all, it looks horrible. Second of all, I have to plug it in to see if it works. And I can't because you don't have the AV cable. So I was like, goodbye. So I had Super Mario World before I had an actual Super Nintendo. And then Will bought me a Super Nintendo. And it's actually, I'm looking at it right now. It's not yellow or anything. It's a very, it's a very good condition. Uh, Cindy's. <laughs> we all know about emulators, you smug C words. He says, we want the official Nintendo hardware. Oh, I see what you're saying. I guess you're talking to other people in the chat who are saying you could just play this thing on an emulator. Yeah, this is just a collector's item. It's the same thing with the NES Classic. We can play all those games already. We can play them on, out in full HD if we just get emulators. Same thing with people who are buying the Retro Pies or, or they're buying Raspberry Pies and trying to put uh, like emulators onto it. It's the better way to, to, to make an NES Classic because you can put whatever games you want on it. But that doesn't. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in just collecting the Nintendo hardware. So, I really, really want the Japanese one because that box is awesome, and I will never take it out of the box. Just buy it, hang it on my shelf. I'll be one of those assholes. At least I'm not one of the assholes who would buy it and flip it on eBay. That's a little much. Nintendo did say that they're coming out, that they're going to be making as a lot more than they did the NES Classic. They're going to try to make, they're going to try to meet demand, but they're only making it for this year. They're going to stop production after this holiday season, just like they did the NES Classic. So people are saying that they're not going to have a lot. And plus, pre-orders already sold out for uh, Europe. I didn't see pre-orders come up for North America. But I, th I think they're going to have more but it still won't be easy to get because it's so like i said i would buy two if if i could and for no reason other than i just want to hoard them and you would too don't lie to me uh thom says although i never realized how ugly the u.s snes is until the other day so i'm glad i live in the uk apart from being ripped off on price yeah the the north american snes is ugly it is terrible i don't know why we got a weird looking one I, I they they think that us americans are like angry i'm angry but i don't think i represent all americans and they they thought we needed like hard corners or something and it can't be colorful it can only be gray and purple so i don't know what the hell happened And apparently on some of them, the top plastic would get yellow because of some, they put more carbon in it or something. It was mixed, something they, they put in the plastic, they, they mixed it weird for only the mold of the top part and only, only some, one of the batches. So I'm lucky the one I have isn't yellow at all. My NES though, compared to it, it's looking a little yellow. Jesse says, Star Fox 2 will be ripped from the SNES Classic and put online as a ROM. It already is. You can go get it right now. I guess it'll be a different version, though. It'll be like the 100% completed version. Oh, also, you can't play Star Fox 2 until you beat the first level of Star Fox 1. That's why sometimes, I think on the box, it says uh, 20 games plus 1. Because that's the plus 1. They couldn't say 21 games because technically you have to unlock it. Uh, Nintendo keeps Vile Tough says Nintendo keeps bull crap answers as to if there is going to be a virtual console on the Switch. There is. Unless unless they is that why they they're like not saying virtual console are they saying like Switch online? Cuz I'm pretty sure they confirmed that it's going to have GameCube games at the very least. 
And I would imagine that would still be called Virtual Console. Uh, I think I went too far back in the chat now. Also, I'm not cursing on this to make it easier on Will later when he has to make this into a podcast. Jeter says there was one finished copy, actually. What does that mean? There was a finished copy of Star Fox? Cindy says that's a lie. Nintendo never ripped ROMs. I don't know where you're getting that information from, but they ripped the original Mario. That that is that ROM on the the Wii Virtual Console, and I'm pretty sure all the other Virtual Consoles that it's on was ripped from a ROM. It has the the same container. It has the same. You could look up the YouTube videos. You'll you'll find the proof, and then you can download a ROM and see for yourself. Uh, AJ says, apparently they're adding in some roguelike mechanics as well. I think this is going to be more different than we assume based on the ROMs. That's interesting because that ex-developer who worked on Star Fox 2 kind of said it was roguelike. So, I don't know if that was added in. Maybe they played it up a little more, but it sounded like it was already a little bit roguelike. I didn't play past my first playthrough. I only played through. Uh, I only played through it once. I don't even know if I beat it. I think I got towards the end. But it's not as easy as like uh, Star Fox sixty four was. Shane says, "No, no, no. The non North American one is ugly to me. All about the North American version. You're like the only person." Also, the box for the friggin' Japanese one is way cool. Mm. Comes in a black case, apparently. Uh, people are asking, where's Will? Will got a flat tire on his way here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we talked about Star Fox. It's kind of all I had. The other thing I had, there's like not a lot going on. The other thing I had was Twitch affiliates, which I already talked about a little bit. So, Twitch, uh, so if you didn't know, Twitch used to have one tier of subscriptions. So it was either you were a regular old Twitch person, you can watch streams, you could uh, stream yourself, and that was me. I was a regular old Twitch person, even though I streamed every week. Um, then there was the Twitch partner. If you get your special little partnership, you get approved by Twitch, then you can get a little sub button, and that means people will pay $5 for that subscription every month to be sub to you, and they get a whole bunch of emotes that they can use in, sh in your chat and everybody else's chat all across Twitch. And that was a big deal. It was like big. It was it was like uh, it was a big deal to be partnered by Twitch. Everybody was was uh, striving for partnership, and it was really hard to get partnered by Twitch, which I think is really dumb. I think they should just open it up to everybody. Because why 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 limit the amount of revenue you can get? Anyway, uh, a few months ago they started the affiliate program which meant that there's a tier between regular Twitch person and partner. There is now the affiliate. And the affiliate gets a sub button now. So you could subscribe for $5. And one emote. Not a whole slew of emotes, but just one emote. Um, and they launched that a few months ago. I became an affiliate. Thank you very much, everybody. And... Uh, they just launched the subscription button today for affiliates and the emote, but the emote has to be approved. And I don't know if they're going to approve me because I have that little Sonic guy down there. Can I do it? Can I point to it? That little Sonic guy down there. But uh, it's it's Sonic, so I don't know. I don't know how they're going to feel about that. They also changed their subscription system, so you can subscribe 
for free with Twitch Prime, which is Amazon Prime because Twitch is owned by Amazon. So if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you could subscribe what uh for one month for free you have to keep renewing your subscription manually it doesn't auto renew but it's totally free if you have a uh, an amazon prime subscription um that equals the five dollar subscription so the amazon prime and five dollar subscription are on the same tier then there is the ten dollar subscription which gives you more emotes or different emotes if you're an affiliate, I guess. And there's a $25 subscription. I was not aware that affiliates were going to get the $10 and $25 tiers. I thought affiliates were only going to get the $5 tier. So that's kind of freaking awesome. However, I don't want anybody to sub for $10 or $25 because I only stream once a week. So don't do that. If you're going to do anything, just use do the Twitch Prime. It's free. And every single person who subscribes to me is going to get... A sketch card. Do I have any sketch cards? Where are my sketch cards? Hold on a second. I gotta get a sketch card. Uh, hold on a second. Alright. So if you subscribe to me, I get I'm gonna draw you one of these guys. And you can get You can get one of these. I mean, I'll draw a unique one, then I'll go look at this. I'll probably be Sonic mostly. But I'm going to draw a unique one for each person that subscribes to me, and I will give it to them. I'll mail it to them for free. Ugh. Oh, wait, I got to. There we go. Tevia says, sounds overly complicated. It is. All you need to know is that affiliates, you could just subscribe for free with Twitch Prime or pay $5 a month. And all you got to do is do that one time and you get a sketch card for me. I think I got to raise the light a little bit. I just dimmed it like an idiot. But here's the thing. Because they added the affiliate part, people are pissed off. A lot of Twitch partners are mad because now it's easy to get a sub button because you only have to be an affiliate you don't have to be a partner and a lot of uh people who watch twitch are mad because now there's all of these people that they feel obligated to subscribe to so there's all of this drama all across twitch and i think it's all garbage if you're a partner that is mad that more people have subscription buttons because they think i guess it's easier to get a subscription button and now uh, they're going to lose money because people are going to be subscribing to these other people. Those people have major issues with their self-worth. There's a reason why they're partners. There's a reason why people are subbing to them. If they think having op the option to subscribe to more people is going to take away from them, then they have major like issues with the way that with their self-worth. That's just like selfish is what it is and i'm i'm totally biased because i'm an affiliate but i've always felt that the partnership program having seen all these other streamers go through the 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 ringer trying to be a partner it is garbage the way that they they reject you like 10 times before you finally get approved it's it's just why why even have to go through any of that and a lot of it is all political and just it's the worst because it's it's these it's these Twitch employees that approve you and they know you and they're all part of the community. Like yeah, they care about your numbers, how well you do every week, but there's people who didn't do well at all and they became partner because they either liked them, they just liked them as people, or they were they were good looking girls and they wanted to try to get in with them. It was like really messed up the way the things that I saw going through the the Twitch partner program. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's all stupid. And to the people who think that, uh, they have to subscribe to everybody, to, to the Twitch viewers who, who are upset that there's more people to subscribe to now, you don't have to subscribe to anybody. 
Nobody's asking you to subscribe. You don't have to watch anybody you don't want to watch. You don't have to subscribe to anybody you don't want to subscribe to. Keep your money. Nobody wants you to subscribe to them. If if people are begging for your subscription, then there's something wrong with them too. Keep your money. You only do it if you want to. That's my two cents on Twitch Prime and Twitch subscriptions. Uh, I, I I like YouTube a lot better. <laughs> I think YouTube needs to implement uh, their own version of Twitch subscriptions. This is my pitch. I, I, I did a little tweet the other day that got absolutely nowhere. Nobody cared about it. But I think that YouTube should have a subscription service. They, they already have something similar on YouTube gaming. I think they call it uh, sponsorship. It's three ninety nine on YouTube gaming. I think they should do that. It should be three ninety nine. But it should be all across YouTube. So at $3.99 a month, you get uh, ad-free viewing for that one channel. So you can watch any of their videos ad-free for $3.99. You get a special little icon in the chat so everybody knows that you're a subscriber. So you know your comments look flared and they, and they you know, look better than everybody else's. I think that was it. Was that it? There was something else. Those are like the two, like, people are going to want that. The master says in quotes, Sonic was never good. I can't tell if you're trolling or what. But, so last night, I went through the comments for my video uh, that was titled, Sonic never had a good game, in quotes. Because uh, I went through the, the comments because I was giving away sketch cards to random people in, in the comments. And so many people just didn't watch the video and assumed that I thought Sonic was bad. <laughs> I love Sonic. He's my emote. Going through the chat, seeing what you kids have to say here. Fred, you wasted your free sub. What the hell's wrong with you, Fred? Tonight's the night. Tonight's the big night. And you wasted your goddamn free sub. Here I am begging for subs. How am I ever going to keep the lights on? Oh! Is that a super chat? That's a super chat. Why is it not in my chat? Fred! Flared and special messages like a super chat. Yeah, exactly like a super chat. But in comments, in regular YouTube comments, because streaming isn't like the core audience. This is like a little humble audience right here. AJ says, competition is good. People need to realize they don't need to conflate their journey to Twitch success with others. Of course, it'll be it'll get better for newer creators. That's how progress works. Exactly. People brought somebody brought up that Twitch has new users every single day, so it's just growing and growing and growing. So there needs to be new streamers to grab those new people. Plus, the way I look at it, if somebody else is is a YouTuber, let's say, and they cover a lot of the same things we do, let's say there's another two brothers who cover. Uh, gaming and comic books and they do have the same format we do I want to collaborate with those people because their audience is going to be different than my I don't think that they're stealing from our audience because again YouTube it's it is also always growing there's always new people and those other YouTubers are going to get new people on the platform so people who would watch us wouldn't necessarily watch them and vice versa No, I don't think anybody's going to leave us for them I don't think anybody's going to leave them for us. But I think that we get our own people from off of YouTube and they get their own people from off of YouTube. And we all get shown in each other's like suggestion boxes on, on the side of, of videos. If somebody makes a similar video than me, I will come up in their suggested videos. And that's a big deal. So we're all helping each other. The more the better. Plus people binge watch. They leave that autoplay on and they just watch everybody. 
Same thing with Twitch. The more the better. Going through the chat again. Peyton says, do you think it would be better to remaster old Nintendo games and release them on the Switch or keep doing it how they are now with the releases of the old consoles? Uh, Miyamoto did an interview with Kotaku and said that he is not interested in remastering any Mario games. And I don't blame him because almost all of them are perfect the way they are. The only thing that they could tweak are graphics, and I think that they're all beautiful in their own right, except for Super Mario 64. I think that's the only one that could benefit from a remaster, and they already kind of did it for the 3DS. So I like how they're doing it. I don't think they should just stick to the classic edition consoles, though. I like that they're releasing them. Those are good ideas. But I want those, I want all of those games available on Switch Virtual Console right now. Leono says, nine ways to get the most out of your Switch is my top three YouTube video of the year. Keep doing more like that. Thank you very much. I'm very curious to know what your top two are. I keep trying to recreate the magic of that video. Uh... AJ says, you got to start saying lit way more, fam. No. You mean bud, by the way. <laughs> that was the uh, streamer thing of last year. Bud. It's so condescending. Gotta start saying lit more, bud. That's bud is like what you say when you're like trying to talk down to somebody. You're like, oh, that those are real cool shoes there, bud. It's like it's so rude. <laughs> I hate it so much. Can we talk about DLC pack one for Breath of the Wild? Because I'm hyped, says Noah. Uh, yeah, that's Friday. That comes out Friday. I haven't, I forgot what's going to be in it. <laughs> I'm going to look that up right now. Any pain on Resident Evil Vendetta? Because I saw that movie and it was really good. I will not watch any Resident Evil movies because the first one that I watched was terrible. I've seen I've seen two of them I think I saw the first one and like a random one and I did not enjoy it. So DLC pack one, the trial of the sword hard mode. Oh my god, I haven't even beaten the game yet. Heroes path mode, travel medallion, and new armor. I would like to learn more, please. Trial of the Sword, when you get to a certain sacred location, I read this on Wolfden Library, you can take a, on the new Trial of the Sword challenge, face an onslaught of enemies one way after another, so a horde mode. Link starts the challenge without any equipment or weapons. When all the enemies in a room are defeated, Link proceeds to the next. Clear all the trials, about 45 rooms in total, oh my god, and the power of the Master Sword will be awakened. And it will always be in its glowing, powered-up state. Wow. You can get Majora's Mask, Minda's Helmet, Phantom Armor, which is awesome. Oh, and Tingle's Outfit. Karak Mask. That's pretty cool. I'm not that interested because I haven't even beat Zelda yet. Oh, Resident Evil Vendetta is a CGI movie, not a live action movie. I didn't know that. All right, so we got some things to unbox. So this company sent me some Switch accessories, they called them. 
this one is Nintendo Switch Tempered Glass, I guess, uh, screen protector. But what I'm a little perplexed about is that it has an iPad on the cover. <laughs> so I think they might have sent me the wrong thing. Unless they meant to. No, this looks like the Switch. I guess they just cut it. This is bizarre. Oh, it's oh yeah, this is for the Switch definitely because it's got the it's got the little nick here. There's a link to this in the description. It's from mobilefun.co.uk. Comes with the wipes. Now, I am not a fan of screen protectors, but if you want to make sure your dock doesn't scratch your Switch, this is not a bad idea. This is thick. It's not like one of those dinky ones you get on your cell phone. It's like a big deal here. But I gotta be honest, the Switch has a pretty... It's, it's like plastic, that screen. So it's pretty good on its own. Unless you're really careless and you really want to protect your Switch. Then go for one of these guys. But I'm gonna stick to being naked on mine. Thank you very much. And this guy, which again, looks like an iPhone stand. So let's see. Let's see if this one's different. This one I'm interested in because it looks like you can charge and play at the same time. This is... How the hell is my Switch going to fit in this? I got to get my Switch now. I don't... I don't buy this that it's going to hold my Switch. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Ah. Last night, I was playing my Switch. I was playing Oceanhorn. Monster of the Seas or something. It's not good. Don't get it. Oh, yeah, those hooks are big enough. Wow. And you can charge it while you play it. Cool. There you go. So it says Oceanhorn. Wow! I don't know how much it is, but link is in the description. So there you go. I have one of these for my iPad. I love it for my iPad. I might just use this for my... Actually, it looks exactly the same as the one that I have for my iPad. I like it for my iPad because I draw with it. So I put it on the dock and I draw. And it's great. Somebody in the chat, Jason, says SNES pre-orders are live. And somebody else said, are you trolling? And now I'm curious, because I want one. Mm, nope. Not live. He got me. I got got. Shane says, why is Oceanhorn bad? I wouldn't say it's bad, even though I just did. It's not bad. It's just... It's, it's as if... A college kid made a Zelda game. That's what it. That's what it feels like to me. It. It's just a Zelda knockoff that like doesn't have like a good twist. If you're gonna rip off something like Zelda, you need to put a twist on it that will make people want to get it. You know what I mean? But it's just it's just Zelda with with like half the coolness <laughs> there are pitches that like it's a big epic story but it's really i only played it for like 20 minutes or half an hour and i was i got the, i was like i get the gist this is just this is just a wannabe zelda oh vile tough says ocean horn was originally an ios game when did it come out now that you say that, it makes a lot more sense. Because it kind of feels like an iOS game. On Steam, it has a 9 out of 10. What? Google Play, it has a 4.3 out of 5. I I'm, Honestly, it might be a lot better on the, uh, on the phone. 
it actually looks way better on the phone. Can I can I copy this over to my desktop and show you guys? Thom just texted, just, just tweeted at me and said, "As much as I love you reading my comments, my name is pronounced Tom." <laughs> You know, I, every time I read it, I'm like, I'm saying this wrong. You'll always be Thom in my heart. <laughs> Look at that. That is not what it looks like on the Switch at all. This is what it looks like on the Switch. <laughs> like, this looks way cooler. This must not be the same game. No, this is Oceanhorn 2, so that's not even out yet. I don't think. So yeah, the only reason why I played it was because they, I got sent it. And I don't get sent many keys for games. So they sent it to me. And it's a Switch game, so I felt like I had to play it. So I guess if you want to play it, play it on your phone. I, it's probably a better experience on your phone. But on the, on the Switch, why in God's name would I want to play that when Zelda is also on the Switch? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Is Oceanhorn, is Oceanhorn worth it for the price? I don't even know how much it is. Uh, it is, I mean, it's obviously cheaper than Zelda. $15. Uh, see if there's a trial for the phone, because again, it is probably better on your phone. It's like, again, if you have a Switch, you probably have Zelda already. So I don't, I, I wouldn't think that it's worth it, to be honest. So now is usually the time when we talk to the chat. Uh, I've already been talking to the chat. So you can keep saying stuff, but I'm going to... Look up the hashtag WolfDenLive, which you can use to talk to us also on Twitter. Make sure you spell it correctly, or I'll come to your house and kiss your mother. Uh, oh, I'm using the wrong thing. There we go. Was the 21st last week? Yes. Fred says, would you like to see an Equalizer slash John Wick crossover? I don't even know what the Equalizer is, but I like John Wick. So I'll take more John Wick. Atomic Blonde comes out in, I think, two weeks. And that looks like a female John Wick, and it looks amazing. I also want to see... It's a movie. Baby Driver. This week. Came out yesterday, I think. That looks like a damn good movie. Simone Stig, what are your dream games for the NES, uh, SNES Classic? And do you think Sega will ever come out with a Genesis Classic? Sega made theirs first, but it wasn't made by Sega. It was made by At Games, and it is not good. At least it's not comparable to the NES Classic. That is much more of like a collector's item. The At Games uh, thing... It had games built in, but you could also plug a cartridge in. But it played the, the audio at a weird frequency, and all the audio was bad. So, no, Sega's not going to make their own. They're going to keep making the At Games one. At Games is running this ad campaign now where they're trying to make it seem like Sega has their own uh, like Genesis Classic. And Atari, they, they have one for Atari too, but they both look like cheap plastic. I hope that they fix the emulator on them because they they're, they weren't... When I tried it, it w wasn't good. Oh, and what are your dream games for the Super Nintendo Classic? Uh, we got a lot of them. Um, I was going to look back because we did a Wolf Den Live where we said what games we wanted on the Super Nintendo Classic. And I think we got all of them. Uh, Mega Man X, uh, Super Metroid, Star Fox. I might have even talked about Star Fox 2. Now I need to go back and watch that. Somebody do that for me. <laughs> um, Super Mario World. Earthbound. The, oh, oh, we definitely said...
Turtles in Time, which we didn't get, and that's kind of upsetting, and maybe Aladdin, even though the Genesis version is far superior. I think there's a Lion King one, too. But yeah, all those licensed games, we didn't get any of the licensed games. And there were some great licensed games on the Super Nintendo. Mika says, any chance of some drawing videos uploaded to YouTube? Always miss your stream, but love your thumbnails. Ah, uh, probably not on the Wolf Den YouTube. If I ever upload drawing stuff, it'll probably be on my own YouTube channel. That's just Bob Wolf, but it is barely like a channel right now. <laughs> so don't go subscribing over there. If I upload anything, you'll probably see me tweet it or something i don't know oh he uh, fred also said i got all of trigon on dvd the other day trigon is one of if not my favorite animes it was like the first one that i really got into i love trigon the other day uh there was a facebook somebody put on facebook what's your uh what is the best episode of any uh tv series and I said, uh, I'm ashamed to say episode 24 of Trigon. That is the episode where he goes up against, it's like the, it's the third to last episode. He goes up against Legato and he's got, Legato makes him like decide whether or not he has to kill something or something. It's, it's great. You have to watch all of Trigon to get up to that point to like understand how cool it is. Now I gotta go to last week's Wolf Den Live and look at the comments there. This is uh this is not easy when you're when you're one person. I mean I'm I'm a little egotistical, but even I don't like doing this. <laughs> and after this, we gotta go over to Twitch. And I wanted to do it immediately, but I'm gonna need a friggin' break. I might need a poop. You never know. Bilbo's nuts says any developers. Why don't they use social media more aggressively to get their games out there? If it's crap, they've only got themselves to blame. I don't know what that's in reference to. What did we talk about last week? Oh, any games aren't relevant. Uh, they do. I mean, they all use social media. But again, they're small teams. So they can't have as aggressive of a social media strategy as some of these bigger companies have. They have dedicated people who only do social media all day, every day. So, I understand why they're not aggressively on social media. Um, Filthy Mike, the guy who does, uh, the guy who basically runs Filthy Casual, he's also a game developer, and he hits social media really hard. So he does it right, and he's an indie developer. So it's him and like one other guy, and they do, and they they do everything. So that's somebody who does social media right. Oh, this one looks a little long. Mark says, hey guys, big fan. I wanted to ask for some advice. I want to build a PC. This is the wrong place to ask for advice. But I don't have in-depth knowledge about all the parts I would need. I want to be able to play new games that will be coming out this year. And I like to draw in Photoshop on a Cintiq and edit videos. There you go. What kinds of parts would you recommend that would be able to play all the latest games, draw in Photoshop, and edit videos smoothly? I've been using a six-year-old laptop, and it has problems with Photoshop and editing videos, and it's impossibly it's impossible to play games on. So if it's a long question, any advice, blah, blah, blah. My computer that I built is a Hackintosh, so it's a Mac and a Windows computer. And I built it in 2013. All I did was upgrade the video card last year. Oh, no, earlier this year I upgraded the video card. And it has an i5 processor in it. I want to get an i7 because I was trying to edit 4K videos, and it's not not good for 4K. Uh, it might be if I got Final Cut, because Final Cut edits 4K real smooth. But I like Premiere. Uh, I can't really help you. Just go on Newegg, get one of those packages that has an i7 and a good motherboard, a good graphics card. Everybody's all creaming themselves over the 1080i. It's the 1080ti. So 
If you have the money, just dump it into that. I have a 970, I think. It's not like the best, but I can play a lot of games. We're streaming on it right now, so whatever. Oh, we have a lot of comments. Darth Plague is Bob. What game would it take to get you to play the PS4 again? Anthem. I'll play that. What else? There's another PS4 game. Oh, Battlefront 2. I'll play that. Uh, I might play the new Call of Duty. But other than that... Last of Us 2? <laughs> oh, Destiny 2. Obviously. Trifter. Oh, that's for Will. He's not here. That's another one for Will. He's not here. <laughs> Mohammed, hey Bob, how long do you think Shoddycast can ride the Fallout Skyrim wave? That's a very good question. There's only so much you can do with that material. Uh, forever. They will ride that wave forever. <laughs> There's always going to be new material coming out. Uh, I don't know how many art videos I can make on that stuff. Um, I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to make some videos uh, on other games. Because I would love to do the art of like Sonic. That would be sick. But we need to get the audience used to seeing other games than just uh, Bethesda stuff from Shoddycast. Because right now, when you start talking about other games, they're like, this used to be a Fallout channel. What the heck, man? You turn it into game theory and all that stuff. Justin says, yeah, Nintendo's presentation showed 2018 dates for both Yoshi and Kirby. I didn't see that at all. I think it's better for them to release them next year so that they can stay on this almost monthly first-party release schedule. Yeah, you're right. And not blow their load too quick. As of right now, I think Nintendo has the strongest 2017 lineup of... Has the strongest 2017 of all lineup. June, Arms, July, Splatoon 2, August, Mario and Rabbids. Eh. September, Pokémon Tournament. And October, Super Mario Odyssey. Now arriving at... Sp Speculation Station, November probably Fire Emblem Warriors, December probably Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because Holiday 2017. Okay. I respect that, but it's still upsetting that we're not seeing Yoshi and Kirby. But next year is going to be a huge year for Nintendo. I think that this year is already really big for Nintendo, and I think next year is going to be even bigger because we're starting to ease into to the Switch console life cycle. Uh, Bilbo's nuts as Harrison Ford is Han Solo, so you can't replace the aura. I agree. JDXVX, anyone else watching this waiting for the Steam sale to go live? My wallet, where are you? Just insert my wallet into PC and I'm ready to go. Until then, I'll listen to this fine show. And these two gentlemen, well, thank you very much. I didn't buy anything during the Steam sale because I don't want anything. <laughs> Casey says, any knowledge of Octopath Traveler? No. All right, sorry, now I'm in the chat. Fred says episode 40 of One Piece or around there would probably be the best episode of any TV. You can't say or around there. It's the best episode of any show. <laughs> you need one. You can't just throw a dart and hit one. Apparently, everybody's mad at this Jason character in the chat who keeps saying that uh, SNES classic pre-orders are up. Just don't listen to him. <laughs> Zylo Fisso says Anthem hype. Yeah, I'm I am pretty hyped for Anthem. Probably only going to play it for a little bit. There was another game coming out that I was like pretty excited for on PS4. Oh, there's freaking the Crash Trilogy coming out tomorrow. That's one of those games that I'll buy and play once and then never again. I was never into Crash because I never had a play, uh, PlayStation 1. And everybody's favorite games are like the first three. I'm not including Crash Team Racing because that doesn't really count. And uh, I don't see them translating well. If it came out on Switch, then I'd play it. Alejandro says, who's your favorite Overwatch hero? That'd be McCree. 
However, I switched between McCree, Hanzo, Tracer, Bastion. I play Bastion a lot because he's easy to get kills, but I mean, I don't care. He's, he's good. Hanzo, Bastion, McCree, Tracer. Rarely Genji. And I think that's it. Yeah, it's really the only one. Oh, and sometimes I do Reinhardt if nobody else is on, you know, defense. <laughs> Fred says, my bad, Bob. There are like 790 episodes of One Piece, and I have to remember a specific, and I can't. I don't blame you. But then maybe it's not the best. Maybe it's not one episode can't be the best of all time. Dumb Plum says, are you excited for Skyrim with the Zelda items to come out on the Switch? I'm super excited. I am super excited because I still never beat Skyrim, even though I talk about it all the time on YouTube.com slash ShoddyCast. Uh, and hopefully this will get me to beat it. This will be my third time buying a game that I never thought I would ever play. <laughs> I, I am enjoying myself playing it, though. I... I was never interested. I'm not interested in medieval worlds. I'm not interested in its RPG-ness. But it's actually, it's, it's a pretty damn good game. Live to Rock says Cowboy Bebop is amazing. Yes, Cowboy Bebop is amazing. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch Trigun, uh, Cowboy Bebop. There's other animes that I wanted to get myself through. I will tell you, Your Name, if you haven't seen Your Name, the movie, Your Name, you have to see Your Name. It is amazing. I've also never seen a Studio Ghibli film, <laughs> so maybe I should start with those. Media Slave says, people still playing the Switch? Yeah, people still playing the Switch. God damn it. Get Ocean Horn if you haven't got anything yet. Oh, what's that game? Uh, oh, it's like Mega Man. Oh, I played the other one on the, on the 3DS, and it was awesome. Uh, Mighty Gun Vault. That's the next game I'm buying for this guy. I didn't buy it last day because I didn't have a lot of time. but And I wanted to play Oceanhorn. But Mighty Gun Vault, that is, that is my next purchase. Because the 3DS one was great. Azure Striker Gun Vault is another one that's coming out, and that is that looks like if they were to keep making Mega Man games what it would look like. And it the one for 3DS was awesome, but they're coming out with another one for the Switch, and it also looks awesome. Mikachu says, Space Dandy is also amazing. Yes, the first few episodes I watched were really good. All right, guys, I'm going to take like one or two more questions, then I'm out. Don't forget... Hop over to the post show over on twitch.tv slash Bob Wolf. That's why this little guy is in purple right here. I might just leave that forever. I kind of like the way that looks. Today is the first day I have my affiliate sub button where one eventually once it gets approved, you will get that emote down there. It'll hopefully get approved by next week. Um, I will be there as quickly as possible i'll probably need about a half an hour or so to get a beer take a poop make sure will's alive <laughs> all that stuff uh so a lot of people from the discord usually hang out in uh my twitch chat so we all have a little good time it's a, it's a good party why are you spamming the discord is it our Discord? You better be spamming our Discord. <laughs> uh, this is the last question. Zach Attack. What's your first Sonic game? My first was Sonic 2. That's a lot of people's favorite Sonic game, but I think that's just because of nostalgia and the fact that most people had that because it came with the Sega Genesis. My favorite Sonic game is Sonic 3. And throw Knuckles on there too. Common Boy says, get on watching Studio Ghibli films. Especially Spirited Away. Yeah, no, I gotta watch all of them. I gotta plow through all of them. Guys, thank you for being here with me. I'm alone. I hate being alone. I'm a lonely soul. 
But uh, hopefully next week we'll have this guy back without a flat tire. <laughs> Don't forget to go to my Twitch. The, the link is in the description and the link is in the chat right now. If you're watching this afterwards, go to my Twitch. If you're watching the, the archive of this video, go to my Twitch and hit that follow button and get the notifications on so you can tell every time that I go live there. Because hopefully I'm going to go live more than just once a week now that I have that affiliate button. I want to start making more of these sketch cards to give to people. And I'm going to have to stream that. So, again, I will be there probably in about a half an hour. So, hit that follow button, put the notification on, or just open the tab and leave it there until you start hearing noises. Noises like this. And don't forget, uh, you can listen to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Leave us a review. Rate us five stars if you think we're great. If you don't, don't rate us at all. <laughs> um, you leave us comments. Say, oh my God, this is the best podcast ever. Or say, Bob's a handsome boy. Don't say boy. Uh, and if you want to talk to us and you're not here in the chat, you can use the hashtag WolfDenLive on Twitter. Or you can just leave a comment on this YouTube video and we will answer it next week. Thank you guys for being here. I got to go over to the Chrome window now and go like this and have a good week, everybody. Goodbye. Go to Twitch. The link is in the description. Jesse, thank you for the $5 super chat. You enjoy our channel. Thank you. I love you. Mwah. Goodbye.